Now this project is going to be relatively simple. I've got some spare ash from a prior project I did for my folks not too long ago. Now I'm going to batch out two of these frames because one of which is going to go to my mother-in-law for a beautiful picture that she had made when she was on her latest horseback ride. And the second is going to go to a charity walk that I am sponsoring. Now as you can see as part of my plan there will be a half inch overhang on either end of each piece of stock. This will just give it a little personality. I'm going to go ahead and start with cutting them up to two inches wide. And I'm going to batch cut these so they're all going to be the same. Alright, now with all the pieces cut to their final width, I'm going to cut them to length making sure that both ends are square. We're going to do that on the crosscut sled. Alright, now with all the pieces cut to length, we're going to start making the half laps. Now I'm going to use the same technique that I showed you in my last join it series for the half lap. As you can see, there is a notch out that is half the thickness of the piece of wood that we're going to use. There is also a half inch overhang with a bevel on all four edges of the end. Now there's one thing that I just learned the other day and that's how to find halfway between your wood without even having to use calipers whatsoever. So the way this works is you have to be using the same stock thickness all the way around. If you go to different thicknesses, you're gonna have to redo this. So I've got a stop block down here and my stock that I'm going to use overhanging the kerf right here by about halfway. Now, I lock the stop block in place. We're gonna run it through the blade once, then we're gonna flip it over, run it through again, and see how much we're left with. Raise the blade up slowly, then do it again, until we reach the very, very middle, and we take out the remainder piece of wood. And there you have the center of the piece of wood found just by raising the blade up little by little. No measurement required. As you can see, whew, uh, it gets pretty dusty whenever you clear them out like that. So make sure that you wear a face mask and eye protection because you're going to need it. All right, now it's time to cut the rabbits in the back to accept the actual picture and glass. So, as you can see by my plans, the rabbit actually on a couple of pieces of the frame extend into the half lap. On the other half, it does not. So, what I've got here is a rabbiting bit that is set for 3 eighths of an inch high because it's also 3 eighths of an inch deep once it touches the ball bearing. But there's one quick thing that I want to address. This is ash. Ash is a very dense, hard wood. So, if I was to take a 3 8 by 3 8 inch pass trying to cut that rabbit out, it would be so bad. <laughs> I would have so much splintering and burning because this bit isn't exactly the sharpest bit in the bunch. So I'm going to take it little by little, raising the bit up, and probably take about four or five passes. And my last pass is going to take away all the burning that occurred on the first four or five, however many I take. Now, I've already got the picture frame assembled. So I'm going to keep it that way and then run it over these bits and then I'm going to clean up the corners when I'm done. Now one thing that makes carving these little corners out a lot easier is this little corner chisel. Now you have to take a little bit at a time but it's easiest to go across the grain and just kind of work your way back until you reach this corner. Now another thing I want to do is chamfer the ends. As you can see here in the plans, the chamfer is just a 45 degree bit used to make a decorative edge. So we're going to do that on all the ends. Now these go together quite nicely. You just want to make sure that you have plenty of glue on all these surface areas for a nice tight fit. All right, now one more detail that I wanna to add to these frames now that they are fresh out of the clamps and solid as a rock, is I wanna take my chamfering bit and just chamfer a little bit of a 45 degree angle on the inside of this frame. Now the one downside about doing this is that since it's together, 
and the ball bearing is round and this is square, it's going to leave a rounded chamfer here in the corners. So once the routing is done, I'm just gonna take it over to the assembly table with a small chisel and just finalize that corner to make it look nice and neat. Now, with just a few coats of lacquer and some sanding in between, this picture frame is done. It is smooth as glass, and coincidentally, that's what we're gonna put in the center here. Now, I learned a little bit of a trick from someone at Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby only has the uh, glass insets, uh, so they don't have anything else. They have mats, but I didn't really need that. But what I did want is a uh, little kickstand for the frame to actually just sit up and they don't sell those. So he recommended buying a picture frame at a really cheap discounted price that not only is it cheap to begin with, but it was half off too. So I managed to get two frames for the cost of one, and not only did it come with the glass that I needed, but the backer kickstand at the same time. And the frame my wife can use for other projects. So I bought this frame that's normally $14 for seven, and the glass insert that I would have bought just by itself would have been five bucks plus tax. So uh, I got a pretty good deal. Now, this picture frame was actually made custom for the particular picture that I'm gonna put in here. So it's a little bit smaller than an eight by 10, mainly because I didn't want it to wobble around. So the glass and the backer is just a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna cut the glass on a glass cutter and then also run the backer through my table saw because it's just fiberboard and just cut it down to size and it'll be good to go. Now with the glass cut to size, we're just gonna slip it in to the rabbit that we made. Then take the picture that we're going to use and make note of the orientation. And slide it into place and then the backer. Now because I don't have the appropriate kind of fasteners to keep this in, what I did was take a ring shank nail and I cut the head off. And then I'm just gonna bend that downward so it'll hold this in place just by slipping it into some pre-drilled holes. So next time you have an idea to make something that's pretty ordinary, Think of a way that you can make it extraordinary. Take yourself out of the realm of doing the same thing that everyone else does, like doing miter joints for picture frames, and try and think of something different like half laps. I was told that this is something that they did not expect whenever I showed it to them, and that's what I want. So think outside the box and take your mind to an area that you wouldn't normally go. Just because it takes a little bit more time doesn't mean you can't achieve the same result. However, the results you end up with are going to be much better and more gratifying. Well guys, thank you for joining me on how to create something ordinary into something extraordinary like a half lap picture frame. Now, it is your duty to pay it forward and spread the knowledge. Hey, be sure and check out all of my social media, including the Woodshop 101 podcast with Jeremy Crawford and myself, along with my blog YouTube channel. You'll be able to find me multiple ways, and I hope to hear from you soon. So I will see you on the next build. Remember, be safe in your shops and pay that knowledge forward. Boom! And it's how to find halfway between your wood without having to measure with calipers or a digital height gauge like this one. <laughs> <laughs>